The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 1st, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me a quick email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off nearly, well, 300 points. I was going to say nearly, but 302 points to be exact. Trade out of 26,615. S&P's off 31 or 29.45 is the print. Uh, the NASDAQ is off a 7 tenths of a cent. It's actually the strongest of the indices out here, off 56 points, trading at 76.93. Russell's up one and a quarter, 18 points. Semis are down eight tenths of a percent. New York Stock Exchange, 1.1 percent. Wilshire off one and a half. Trannies, I take that back. They're the leaders to the downside, up 211 points. That's a little over 2 percent. Uh, you've got the spot volatility index up 12 percent so far. You know the routine there. We'll, we'll discuss it again. We won't dwell on it too long, but uh, watch for the end of day reading if it's above 10 percent. Out there, you know what to be watching for, especially if you're an intraday trader of the futures contracts. You'll be looking for some type of pattern to form in the well, it could it could form any any point in time, uh, but you'd be watching for a bottoming pattern and then a bounce from there. You've got gold up 17 bucks, trading out at 14.89. We'll check into that. Silver's up 27 pennies, trading out at 17.27, and you've got the 30-year uh, Treasury up uh, 16, about a half a half a point out there, trading out at 162 and. 26 30 seconds out there lead the charge the upside dollar wise booking holdings 17 bucks all to beauty up 13 or 14 that's five percent not bad mccormick and company up uh, seven percent or 10 bucks and pennant group up well, it must be an IPO up 140. Well, I can't say it must be an IPO. It's up 146 percent. So they're having a good day. We know that. To the downside, it's Google off 12 bucks. Uh, you've got BlackRock off 11. TD Ameritrade off 24 percent or 11 bucks. Transdigim Group off 2 percent or 11. So plenty to look at. What we're going to start looking at, though, we had a couple of requests come in. So I want to go ahead and get to those uh, first out there. A lot to cover today, and uh, so I don't want to get behind and and uh, and leave these out. The first question coming in from uh, Phil, and Phil wanted to take a look at Tower Semiconductor. Uh, T-S-E-M is the ticker symbol. So as we do with each of the uh, positions that we take a look at, we want to understand where is price trading in relationship to its daily, weekly, monthly set of profiles out here. So we know that price today got back inside its daily profile. It has almost explored the bottom and the top. The bottom is 1934 and the top is 2041. The actual high today is 2031, missed it by 10 cents, so it's trading within the range. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, its resistance level would be 2043. So again, price got up towards, so we know 2041, 2043, Phil, key level 
level of resistance. So to the long side, you really want to see that area broken. Now today, the volume so far, 406,000 shares going into 237,000 shares from 913. So that's a positive. And then the uh, swing point high that we're looking at is August 1st, 840,000 shares. So similar-ish type volume. Um, and as long as price um, closes above 1963, Suggests that 2041, maybe even uh, a break of 21, 2041, 2043 would be in order. The monthly time frame chart price above the top of that monthly profile that formed about uh, four months ago out there. I want to say formed a break of resistance. Now, let's go take a look at the other charts that we look for. The daily chart out here is showing a TD setup nine count bottom uh, that formed on the bottom was the, or the low, I should say, of that nine count was on bar number eight. Now, that bar number eight formed uh, before price got all the way back to the breakout area, which was 1849. That's the red horizontal line that is on my screen out here. Now, again, what I don't have, Phil, is the so from looking at all the charts one of the patterns that i'm noticing is that there is a very strong bottom or top that forms when the low bar tends to ends up being bar number eight versus bar nine or the bar following nine that doesn't mean that the bar nine or following nine isn't a top or bottom because if we take a look at tsem here's what we can see we can see right out here on august 2nd the pattern the only pattern that i recognize that's out there that identified that top was the bar number nine. So, but in any event, just taking a look at the current sec session out here, we've taken a look at what, 2041, 2043, and now what we know is at 2046, that is the breakdown resistance area. Price above Stevie's green line, that's 1982 on the daily time frame. So the real key is 2046. It's not 2041, it's not 2043, it's 2046. If you see a close above that, uh, very likely you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside that would be completing. If we look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, what do we know about the weekly time frame chart? In essence, the uh, Stevie's oscillator and change line, that's the red-green line, about four weeks ago, a uh, change from red to green, meaning the price oscillator is now above zero. With price above Stevie's green line, you have a rising price oscillator above zero on the weekly time frame chart. Uh, this formed a bottom back here with the Rhodes momentum indicator. This was in early December, late, I say late December of last year. Um, so everything here looks pretty good. Everything here looks very good. Uh, you know, you've got that resistance, which we saw from the uh, month, uh, weekly time, uh, profile level out there. We said 2046 is a key number. Here's what I don't know. At 2060, 2060 was the old breakout level on a monthly basis, which price did hold that level of support, but bar number nine actually broke that support. That was back in, it looks like, uh, July. It says monthly. It can't be July. It could be. Yeah, it says monthly. Give me a second here. I'll tell you exactly what month it was. Well, it was uh, October. Well, I'm talking about July. It was in October of, uh, of 2018. But we know that that wasn't the lowest low because a couple months later, there was a lower low back here in December. I'm looking at the monthly time frame chart. What I don't know is if old old breakout support becomes resistance. So far, that has really uh, proven to be the point thus far. The monthly chart, um, prices above Stevie's red line, which is a 1916, so it says more counter trend rally. So now what we're gonna say, Phil, if you're in this trade, uh, 2060 is the uh, nut. If uh, 2060, if you see a close above 2060, TSEM, Tower Semiconductor, is telling you it wants higher price and it's broken through resistance. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. We're going to go take a look at the Great British Pound U.S. dollar currency pair for Scott in Colorado. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, Great British Pound U.S. dollar for Scott in uh, in Colorado. And Scott, we have up on our screen right now. We've got the daily, weekly, monthly, and the quarterly set of profiles uh, for the for this currency pair. So the daily are in the upper left. We know that price is below support. That's the bottom of its box. It's at 1.237. We know the price has held the bottom of the uh, weekly profile. Uh, that level is 1.2292. We know that price is trading with inside a bullish structured monthly profile. Bullish structured monthly profile just formed right here, right now, today, in the month of October out there. Um, and then when we take a look at the quarterly prices sitting just below the bottom of its uh, quarterly profile out there, 1.233. Now, the reason we're taking a look at uh, certainly the longer-term charts because uh, what Scott's question, Scott has a question really about the longer term out here. And so the question right now is, is price going to go ahead and get all the way back to the lows or below the lows? of 1985. If we take a look at uh, this again as a quarterly time frame chart, we're just beginning a new quarter out here. But if we take a look again at that quarterly time frame, uh, uh, let me let me change the uh, because that's not perigee. Let me get a uh, line tool out here. Let's make this line yellow. Um, and so the level to be watching for either a rejection or confirmation that price wants to head lower is this 1.2375 area. You can see how, as price came down in October of 2016, that is where price found support. You can take a look at it also in January of 2017 out here. Looks like it was really tested for the most part for that entire three-month period or three, nine-month period of time because also the quarter of uh, that began in uh, uh, 
They began in April of 2017. Looks like that area was tested. Uh, we saw a close just slightly below that area last month. I don't know. So if as long as price stays below 1.2375, Scott, it says you've got a uh, uh, an increased opportunity or chance to go test the bottom of that at about 1.05. However, and I say, however, we did notice that on a monthly basis out here that we've got a brand new profile to consider. So when we come take a look at the monthly charts, just looking for some kind of bottoming signal or pattern, I don't have it out here. When I take a look at the monthly time frame chart for um, for the Great British Pound, if I do some wave counts to the downside, no, we're not uh, there. Nothing. No, when I say not there, we don't have wave numbers, net wave number seven or letter G out here. So here's what you're going to be watching. Um, you're going to be watching Stevie's red line. Uh, let me give you what that value is for the monthly time frame. As soon as I can uh, figure out how to do that, I know how to do that. I'm just trying to get it to pull up. That level is 1.2365. 1.2365. Any close above that on a monthly basis is supporting the bullish structured monthly profile. Now, likewise, to the downside, what's the downside? This is a bullish structured profile. So if we see a close on a monthly basis below the bottom of that monthly profile, 1.21, 1.21, that suggests the larger outcome getting back to that 105 area would be likely because nothing would be more bearish than a failed bullish pattern out here and we'll call a bullish pattern the bullish profiled monthly um, monthly box out there now on a weekly time frame just take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here we can see that this formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom pattern it did so when it created price was moving lower doing less route of energy creates a key reversal bull sash candle we can see that here it's labeled on our charts that was uh, the week of september 6 2019 uh, price is above stevie's red line right now that's at 1.2263 and this suggests to us that price is headed to 1.2706 that is where price last broke down that is on the weekly time frame chart out here let me take a look at the daily real quickly and then i'll summarize it for you what i believe the charts are communicating to you and i in this case here we don't see any kind of a bottom pattern out here uh on the daily time frame so there's nothing um nothing to you know you'd ideally like to see some type of bottoming signal on um, this daily time frame we don't see that price below stevie's greenland this would suggest price could get back to the 1.208 or 1.205 level those were its last breakout areas so what are we going to what are we going to say here i know you're looking for a trade of sorts and you were leaning towards the downside trade inside the great british pound and um but you were looking for something that was more long term and i don't see that I don't see that right now. In order for you to see that, I think you need to see these support levels broken on the daily time frame, the breakout levels. So let's just call 1.205 out there. Um, because otherwise, it looks to me like there is more rally left in the Great British Pound than there is, um, than this thing is ready to head south. And the weekly and the monthly time frame charts are really what are providing us with that signal out here. So I would say that the better short would be the Great British pound rallying up to 1.2706 out here, Scott. That's what I see when I take a look at the charts for the Great British pound. Hope that that hope that that helps you out. Now, there's other questions that have come in. Let me just take a quick peek at those out here. So one's about Doug. Uh, I don't mean D O U G. I mean Doug, which I believe Doug is. Uh, I think that's for the. Uh, I think that's for the energy sector out there. Um, and then one about the GDX and one about the seasonality. So let's do this out here. Bill Jupiter's calling to talk about gold. I think we've got to go to our call. We've got call ahead seating. And uh, Bill, you called ahead. So now is the time for your seating. Let's go take a look at gold. Good, how you, how you doing, Bill? I, I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, in the newsletter this morning, it was really a great call. You talked about a potential short-term <clears throat> bounce for gold to the upside. And sure enough, it's up about $20 today. Could you go through the analysis of what you were looking at to give you the indication that that might happen? Yep. So what Bill is referring to, so one of the things, folks, that, that I do for um, subscribers 
is try to uh, go through various instruments and let them know, just kind of like we just did here uh, for Scott, take a look at the Great British Pound, and then just try to hone it in as to what to expect or anticipate. Now, when I sit down in front of my computer system to take a look at what was going on overnight, one of the things that I'm always looking at for the uh, futures contracts out here, equity or some of the commodity futures, is I'm always looking for signals, bottom or topping signals out here. And that's what this little white background area shows. So, Bill, you'll, you know that in the newsletter this morning when we were taking a look at gold, we know that it broke hard. We know that it broke and closed below key profile levels, weekly profile levels, that is. But, of course, the week doesn't end until Friday. So it's kind of early to make that call. But what we also knew, and it's not showing up right now, but I just pulled this up here right now so folks can see that Light Sweet Crude, as an example, gave a bottom signal in a 30-minute, a one-hour, and a two-hour time frame. So someone would be exploring that as well. But we saw those same signals inside of the uh, gold contract. So what I didn't want somebody to think, Bill, was, hey, you've got this big break inside of gold. Now's the time to go ahead and go short, because that was certainly not the case. And the reason was because of those signals that were showing us bottom-worthy patterns out here. So now let's go take a look at that bottom-worthy pattern, right? So that was, the, that was the information box, my market analyzer tool, to tell us, hey, go look at gold on the two-hour time frame and the 30-minute time frame. Here's the 30-minute time frame for gold, Bill. We're going to a hard break, so just uh, stick with us, if you will and we saw the bottom form sure. with a hammer candle out there and then a bullish engulfing candle about an hour later that was at around four and then five this morning we get back from this break we'll finish off take a look at gold short term long term any term that you want we'll be right back I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as the number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off about three uh, three oh nine. S and P off thirty four. We're on the line with Bill in Jupiter, Florida, and we're taking a look at the uh, thirty minute time frame chart for uh, gold right now. And the reason that we're looking at that is because what it generated this morning was a, a bottom, a bottom worthy signal out here. And what we mean by that is the way that markets will form bottoms and tops. One of the patterns that uh, can be present uh, is the Rhodes momentum indicator pattern. This is when price is moving higher or lower, doing a less relative strength and what we wait for always is a uh, bill we always wait for some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern and what we can see out here exactly at four o'clock we saw a nice little hammer candle uh, the hammer in essence was tested in the following half hour and then after that you got a nice little bullish engulfing uh, candle out there so what it told you and I was that buyers were stepping in at this stage uh, they believe that there was a worthy trade and it was really those three bars Price was above Stevie's uh, red line at that stage. So that said more at least counter trend rally. And as you know, Bill, we said that the counter trend should take us up to 1479.80. Um, and we didn't know what price would do as it got there. Well, uh, I think it was with the ISM numbers, perhaps at 1030, uh, when they came out, the way that gold responded was it shot up and it closed above 1479.80. As we take a look at the uh, current pattern out here, uh, all that we have going is on a 30-minute on a basis is we have an A to B equals CD. If we take a look at that, so the question is, is the rally over inside of uh, gold? Well, the pattern that completed here at 1 p.m. was a Gartley cell pattern. So you've got the A to B equals CD. The A point is the bottom of the hammer at 4 o'clock. The B point is out here at 7 o'clock this morning. Be then we saw price go ahead and pull back. What did it do? It pulled back and it tested the bottom of its profile. It tested Stevie's red line, which held out there. And then it went ahead and zoomed higher. Now what uh, we see on the 30-minute basis is that gold has made the 1 to 2 A to B equals CD pattern. So you've got the first confirmation of it. You've got the bearish engulfing bear sash candle. In order to confirm that this is a valid Gartley sell pattern, when I say valid, that that was it, that was the top, we would need to see a close below support. And there's really two levels of support here to be watching, again, using a 30-minute time frame. The first is 1485.80, and the second is 1483.70. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the, the the potential signal on a 30-minute basis, Bill, of a, uh, of, a, uh, of a top inside of gold. And those were the tools that I used to help assist you with understanding what gold uh, would likely do today based upon those signals. We also had a, a TD setup nine count pattern on a 60 minute basis. And so that was confirming for you and I that um, that there were two valid bottom patterns that were out here. And in the 60 minute time frame, we would see the same uh, Gartley cell pattern because at the uh, one o'clock hour, what we saw was both a bearish engulfing candle confirming the A to B equals C. They haven't drawn that in here right now, as well as a key reversal uh, session. Now, there's no profiles on the 60-minute time frame for you and I to use. So we will default to the 30-minute time frame uh, for gold to tell us what its next intention is. A close below 1483 says the counter trend rally is over. A move above 1493.50 says expect 1500. 1500.9 and probably 1505 to be tagged and touched out there. The other thing that we looked at inside the newsletter bill was we said, hey, look, gold has made at, has made the one to one A to B equal CD to the downside. And even though price broke below key levels of support, if there were a bullish candle that formed today and right now there's not a bullish daily candle out there just because it's green, folks, does not mean it's bullish. When it's green, it tells you where it opened and where it closed. The close was higher red just simply where opened and closed out there. Uh, the candle formation is what's really key. No bullish reversal signal yet. Uh, this just signals to you and I just counter trend rally at this stage. So that's what I see. Yeah. The short term, the daily time frame, and uh, what we want to uh, watch out here is just, you know, we don't have a, we've got a, we've got the topping pattern on the 30 and 60 minute time frame. What we now look for is to see if support gets broken. Wow. Terrific, Steve. Fantastic. Thank you very much. 
Does that does that make sense to you? Any questions? Uh, oh my goodness, no. That's uh, that is mastering probability. Yes, no. Very good. Great analysis. Okay, and so the key level that uh, gold closed below yesterday, and we always like to see two closes, meaning follow through, was 1489.20. We're trading right now at 1488.80. <laughs> so uh, price is sitting right here at a, a key level because uh, if price gets back inside that box, inside the bottom of that uh, profile out there, we'll have to investigate other charts, other time frames to try to figure out what the message is. Uh, but right now, as of 135 in the afternoon, the message is counter trend rally. Great call, Steve. Very good. Okie doke. Thank you. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That was uh, Bill in uh, Florida, up in uh, the uh, Jupiter uh, area. Uh, so we want to take a look at, so we got gold. Uh, out of the way, uh, so to speak, out there. Uh, what we want to take a look at is I want to see what questions, because there's a number that have come in. So let me take a look at the first one here. This one coming in from Tom. Ah, Stevie, are you digging Doug? Uh, if you'd be kindly run through the OUL, TD setup, and so forth. So let's go take a look at uh, Doug out here. D-U-G, let's do what we normally do. I'll try to do it a little bit quicker, uh, just simply because I see a number. It looks like O'Hare Airport out there, and I want to be able to get to everybody. I also notice there's a problem. I've got a data feed issue going on here, and that is a gigantic problem. That's a gigantic problem. I was noticing here that we weren't seeing much movement in the uh, in my indices out here, and I don't know what's the cause of that. I will tell you that we, this neighborhood, we took a major power hit uh, last night, and I, I still I wasn't able to track it down. Uh, thank goodness for generators. Um, you know, power came back on. Uh, everything. The internet didn't come back on, though, until early this morning. That's why subscribers didn't get my end of day reports last night. But um, with that being said, and I've been out of the office most of the morning, so I don't have anything on Doug right now that's popping up. Man, this is a bummer. I think, let me try the XLE. I think Doug is the uh, XLE, he's not popping up. Son of a gun, and it's 1.37 in the afternoon. Okay, so I'm going to leave Doug out here, see if Doug will populate. Uh, what I do have is my other charts are populated. Okay, so let's go take a look at Doug and uh, see what we can figure out here for Tom. So, Tom, here's what we know. Today is going to be day number eight. Appears as if it's going to be day number eight of a TD setup nine count. We know that uh, a top can form on bars eight, nine, be tomorrow. Or th on Thursday, bar that follows bar number nine. I'll just say bar ten at this stage here. Um, so, so, so what? So what do we say out here? Hey, there's a. Would you get into knowing that you could identify or form a potential top on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine? Would either of those, any of those, I can't say either because there's three. Would any of those be a bar that you would want to begin a position in? Just, I don't know if you're looking for a position out here, um, but if you were, the answer is no. Well, my answer to you would be no. Of course, you wouldn't want to uh, do that. Um, price is below resistance, 49.15. Again, whenever this pattern forms, either above its breakout or below its breakdown, this is below its breakdown, uh, that can be kind of bearish out here. So am I digging, Doug? No. Hey, we've got about 10 seconds. What'd the weekly chart do? Weekly chart is running right up into Stevie's red line out here, uh, which is at 4416. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, folks, so the last thing on uh, Doug, uh, because uh, Tom was uh, talking about the long-term time frames out here, and uh, whether that was of any value on uh, on this specific instrument, and the answer is yes. Um, you know the patterns uh, that that I like to use out here. They're agnostic as to what the instrument is. It's just simply chart patterns out here and for all the different time frames. Bill and I were taking a look at the 30 minute and 60 minute time frame for gold this morning. Uh, here we're looking at a monthly time frame for uh, uh, this afternoon. Uh, here we're taking a look at uh, Doug right now. And this was moving lower, has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Uh, this is in October of 2018. Yet yeah, October 2018. Nice big old bullish engulfing candle. Confirming that pattern out here. And what it also did for you, Tom, is it uh, set up where your key level of resistance is, which was where price had broken down. And that was at 51.47. We've seen that area tested several times on a monthly basis. And each time uh, by the end of the month, price had failed to close over that level. So that's real key area, 51.47. You're at 45.14 out here. Uh, looks like it wants to run higher. Very difficult for me to suggest to you to go ahead and take a trade in that knowing that you're close to resistance and you are in bar number eight on the daily time frame out there. So I hope that that helps you out. As you can see, my uh, my e-signal screen, that's the black background screen, is pretty much stationary, uh, stationary, stationary right now. Uh, luckily, my other charts are working okay. Um, so this question from Earl, is the seasonal low in November still a possible target? That seasonal low is typically October. Um, I would say that I don't have any reason to think that it's not, but the market conditions that we're in are really more of a consolidation than they are anything else. No, I, I got rid of my yellow. I can put them back in here. Um, like, let's just take the ES Mini as an example. Peter was asking for the ES Mini, and uh, no Peter on the day. Oh, the 30 minute ES Mini, a TD setup eight count out there. Okay. But if I take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart out here, 
oh, maybe this will let, at least let me put those in here. If we take a look at, there's the consolidation. There was the consolidation. We had the break of the consolidation. The break of the consolidation gave us a uh, price target up here of the 3078 area. If we take a look at what the ES Mini is doing right now, it's coming back and testing the top of that consolidation. It did that a couple of days ago on the 27th. It's doing it right now. And look, if price closes inside this consolidation, that's the, that's the first box out here. So let me go ahead and get rid of the second rectangle but you can sort of see it out there. If price does close back inside there, well, then you can move all the way back down to the bottom. The bottom being in the 2800 area, we'll call it 2813. But right now what the ES Mini is doing, we're taking a look at the December contract out here. It's just simply testing support. And support is the bottom of that weekly profile, that's 2940. We're trading right now 2940.50 out here. So we can see the price is pulled back in the ES Mini to support. So we're just in this consolidation oriented market out here. Um, and so I take that back to the seasonality piece. The seasonality, Let's just take a look at the fact that from a seasonal basis, we typically see a high in the end of July. Well, if you look at the ES Mini, the high out here is the week of July 26. No, the week of the day of July 26 was the intercession high. Now, look, I don't make these dates up. Let's do this here. Let me call up. If you give me a moment to pull up a uh, old PowerPoint uh, presentation, and I keep some of these slides somewhat handy, uh, we should be able to. I should be able to get us right to the seasonal uh, time frame. That way, somebody who's not familiar with it uh, will be able to. Uh, to oh, geez, what the heck was that doing? Yikes! Okay, remind me not to save this file based upon the last thing that I just did. Um, Give me a second to get down there and find the seasonal chart. It's got to be, here we go. So uh, let's see, view, slideshow from current slide. Here we go. So here's our seasonality. So if we take a look at the unfavorable seasonal cycle, if I were to ask you to take a look at this, the average over the last 80 some odd years out here, July 21st is typically the seasonal high, which then leads down to a low October 13th. Now, you had mentioned uh, Earl, you had mentioned November. So it's really on average for the Dow, it's October 13th out here. And the actual high, not July 21st, but it was in the ES mini was July 26th out there. So, yeah, how can I say that it's not in play? It's still in play. But I think the pattern that's more important to you right now with regard to the markets are what's the ES Mini do as it gets down to the support of its weekly profile? And what's it do as it's really testing the breakout of the consolidation pattern out here? Um, and so that's what that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm you know looking at. If you take a look at the ES Mini, just simply because I mentioned it, because Peter had mentioned it. Right now we are in bar number eight of a potential bar number of a TD setup nine count bottom out there. So certainly something to be paying attention to, knowing that you're coming back to support and you've got a potential bottom worthy pattern that is setting up out there. So that's certainly something to take a look at. So I hope that that helps you out, Earl, with regard to your question. LB writes in, Lee writes in, and he says, is it time to jump back into GDX? So, Lee, I, I have to say the answer to that is no. And the reason I have to say the answer to that is no is because we don't have a confirmed bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame chart out here. And even though it's made a one to one A to B equals CD, do not let anybody fool you or somehow talk you into buying the one to one level of an A to B equals CD or selling the one to one level of an A to B equals CD. If you're going to do that, okay, buyer beware, caveat M tour, I guess seller beware, you're better off waiting to see some type of bullish reversal signal. Because my studies show that if you don't get that bullish reversal signal and the markets want to simply continue in the direction that they were going. In this case here, in the case of gold, where it's going to is 1412. That's the daily time frame. The weekly time frame generated a mucho grande. I think that is uh, eventually going to be a, uh, a mucho grande is already a, 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 a a, a Starbucks coffee, isn't it? I don't know. I don't drink it. But if we look at gold on the weekly basis out here, oh, geez, do I, let me see what happens when I try to punch this in here, how quickly this will come up. Um, hey, not too shabby out here. Uh, 
you know, so I'll pull over the daily. Uh, so, Lee, we know, you and I know, directionally speaking, gold and the miners are going to move in the same direction. So you've got gold yesterday on a daily basis. Close below 1490.70. 1490.70 was its breakout level. What has it done today? So far, as of 149, it simply retested an area that was support, which now may be resistance. And that gets us to the 1412 level for gold. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, and we really need to know, I need to know, you need to know, it's only Tuesday. What does the candle look like on Friday? But what we now have is we've got the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top on a weekly basis. That was the bearish engulfing candle from last week. Now we have follow through to the downside out here. And this says over the long haul, where gold is headed to is 1,286 buckaroonies. Buckaroonies. We'll take it one step at a time. Is now the time to get into GDX? No. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. The two-minute wrap, and we're going to wrap it up with uh, Michael. Michael, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Do we have Michael? Do we have Michael? 
Okay. Some reason we must not have Michael, but he was uh, dropped. Okay. But Michael was calling about uh, uh, calling about ticker symbol SCHW. I wish I could tell you what it is. Uh, I can't. Uh, and I don't know what Michael was calling for, but it doesn't matter. We can just simply go take a look at the chart, see what its message is uh, for us. So here's what we know with regard to a ticker symbol SCHW. Back here, July 25th, forms a TD setup nine count top. It does it on the bar following bar number nine. Uh, Schwab, thank you very much, uh, uh, John. And uh, goes ahead and makes a bottom with a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. There's your bullish piercing candle on August 28th. Price bounces right up to resistance. Resistance was the 43. 349 level. It actually got just slightly above that and went to resistance number two. Let me see what that price point was. 4404. Both of those established by the TD set of nine counts to the downside. It gets up to the resistance level, creates that little doji candle, a true doji candle where the open and close are virtually the same out there. That doji candles are really helpful candles at resistance. A doji candle, when the market opens and closes at about the same price, it tells you about what? Indecision. Indecision. That's why when price is getting up towards resistance, indecision, uncertainty, not sure if it's going to be able to make it and take it on, being resistance out here. I believe the doji candle's most important aspect or unique uh, attribute to it is when it's up at resistance. And this is what it was. And since then, it is back down and is pulling right into breakout support of 3706 with a wide ranging bar out there. I don't know if that's going to hold. Likely not out here, but price is sitting at support right now as of 156 in the afternoon. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Sorry we couldn't get to all the questions. We'll do a better job of that tomorrow. Hopefully, the system will be operating better as well. But stay tuned. Our favorite polar bears up next. Even if we are having global warming. <laughs> really? Hey, have a great Tuesday, folks.